out of town from him. <laughs> <laughs> well, only because I asked because, you know, I hear the divorce rate is 80 to 90 percent. I don't know where the statistics you are. You know what that. I can tell you? I think in many, yeah. I, I think that it's crippling. It's crippling. Autism is crippling financially and emotionally to a family. Um, we had a wonderful five years before Daniel arrived to build the foundation of our marriage. Um, but from that moment on, it, it was, everyone's heard the darling uh, Welcome to Holland disability story. Um, th there's an autism mom that's actually written Welcome to Afghanistan for us because autism is not Holland. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no tulip around because mm -hmm. my son shredded the tulip. So. <laughs> oh my and then he ate it. So. <laughs> And then he threw it up. <laughs> so uh, it is. And, and, you know, there's no proverbial dog to kick. You take your emotions out on each other. Mm -hmm. um, poor, poor Dr. DeMio here has been told in no uncertain terms that mommy trumps doctor every day. And so we have those kinds of arguments. What he thinks biomedically should happen. What I think as a mommy, Daniel, your, your is instincts. capable yeah. of handling. Um, and we've had those all the time. I think that date night is crucial. Mm -hmm. Find yourself a babysitter, uh, find yourself a, a loving caregiver, and make sure you get out on a date. Even if you have to go to the movies because you're not speaking to each other, go out, have some time together, and talk about other things. Maintain your interests that you had before children, um, and never ever lose your sense of humor. Well, I think by telling you, I talk about other things, and I think that is so <laughs> crucial because mm -hmm. what happens is you go, and I, I notice this even with my girlfriends, you know, <laughs> that. Everything comes out of my mouth. Autism. Oh, and oh, we tried this. Oh, we're doing this. Oh, guess what he did? And that's because that's our world. We do this. You it know, is our world. Each oh. and every time, right? right. So it's. Um, I think it's so important. Walk away. Walk away and talk about anything else. Right. Talk about what's on the table. Go shopping. You know? Now we do tend to go when we go to a restaurant. You know, we have the babysitter. We're at the restaurant, and anyone at any other table that has children, we're like. Because <laughs> we miss him. We, he is our life, and he is yeah. our son is so funny. I can't even describe to you some of the humorous things that he is. He's so funny. So we miss that. And we, but the time away is invaluable. It's yeah. just invaluable to get that time. And, and the other piece of it is, um, I I would never dream of separating a unit that Daniel depends on so much. I I, I think as hard as you can make it happen. And there are some marriages that simply weren't meant to be. There's some relationships that fall apart regardless. But if it's the autism that's the problem, there's a way to, to compartmentalize and manage that because he looks at this guy and he waits for daddy. I was just jumping with him and on you? the trampoline the when other day. Gone. Daniel and I were jumping. He loves to jump. He loves me to jump and bounce him. He was doing it the other day. So yesterday I'm on the trampoline and Daniel looks at me with great contempt and says, waiting for daddy. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> Aww. Mama cannot jump hard enough. <laughs> Don't you love that he can say that, though? He loves that, Daddy. <laughs> well, uh, I think getting back to the interplay as a biomedical physician, I would sometimes come home and be very excited, to say the least, and want to push these treatments, you know, and, and, and obviously I'm not there most of the time, so that means Joyce would be the one implementing them, and that's a very difficult thing for any mother or a non-medical person. It's very overwhelming for all of our parents, the dads and the moms. And how many times have we in the autism community when we're prescribed a new treatment said, been warned, it'll get bad before it gets better. Oh, yes. And so That's I'm typically lot. home for the bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's been a lot of bad. <laughs> but then it gets but better. It does get better. Yeah. And so everything he's, everything he's presented, um, my, my first reaction, including to the diet, was, no, I can't do that. We can't do that. Um, he pushes us, I push back, he pushes a little harder. We get there and my son improves. Mm -hmm. I, I truly can't say that enough. Biomedical treatment, dietary intervention were the hardest things to implement. They are. Um, yeah. Side effects, trial and error, and all no, of that. It's, it's not a one size fits all. I mean, even because we are at a conference right now, we're at the American Medical Autism Board Conference, mm -hmm. and you know, I'm getting questions from parents asking, okay, well, what do I do with this? What do I do with that? And I wish, and I really wish there was a pamphlet I could give them that gives them all the steps. Oh, yeah. But the problem is, it is trial and error. I mean, sometimes you do a little bit of this and a lot of that and a lot of this and a little of this. And sometimes on Tuesday it works, but on Wednesday it doesn't. But on Friday it seems to happen again. Exactly. And every child's so different. Yeah. And so I think it's important to surround yourself with communities mm -hmm. that believe in yourself. And I so do. And I think it's incredibly oh, important to. to get a biomedical doctor who is willing to stand by your side. Autism is a constant in crisis. We're always in crisis. When you call your doctor in the middle of the night, you can't be that person. You know, everybody hears the answering machines for, 
physicians now that say, this isn't a medicine, so you hang up mm -hmm. and go to the emergency room. We can't take our children to the emergency mm -hmm. room because they will medicate them and restrain them. Mm -hmm. We need a biomedical doctor who can call you right back, walk you through the crisis, prescribe the treatment and supplement that you might need to help understand metabolically what's happening with your child. Not to say they won't end up in an ER on some day, but you, well, we need a level and a parent. standard of care yeah. that's a little higher than, unfortunately, what your traditional pediatrician can provide because our children are so fragile. Well, and it's scary as a parent um, because you'll be in the ER and all of a sudden the mainstream doctor is talking to you and I've called my biomedical doctor mm -hmm. before. <laughs> <laughs> on that moment. I bring a book on all of our dates. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been, I need your help right now. Please talk to this doctor because I can't, I, I'm there. My job at that moment is to be a mommy mm -hmm. and I need somebody else to talk to that doctor because they're looking at me as a mommy. They're not looking at me as an expert. They're right. not looking at me as an advocate. They're looking at me as I'm a mom. So yep. I need somebody yep. else who understands my child, who has a background in my child, and then who can go up to bat for my child. And so that's why that's really yep. important to have. It is. You know, parents should not be put in the middle of this. If you're in an ER, if you're in the OR, if you're in the dental office, if you're on the scene with police, we've gotten calls about those things because People treat autistic persons, I think it's prejudicial, but they, they treat our kids and our parents differently. If a child has a seizure in the grocery store, nobody thinks that mother's a bad parent. Mm -mm. But if your child's having a meltdown because they're having brain inflammation and they have a headache, who do they look at? They look at you like, why you aren't you disciplining child. that child? Absolutely. Why don't you spank him? Why don't you sit her back into the cold seat of the wire grocery cart that they can't stand because of sensory integration problems and nobody gets that. And the bright lights yeah, and, and the, the scent in the grocery yeah. store. And um, all the, the telephones ringing. All the food and they yeah. can't have. And so when I think it's so important that, well, you know, that there's people out there like you guys. You're seriously, I, don't, I know we're almost out of time, but you guys are seriously some of my favorite people. You You're guys, our favorite. <laughs> well, you guys compliment each other <laughs> so much. It's like, I could, honestly, I could watch you guys all day because you're so... You're so loving to each other. You're so beautiful with each other. Uh, yesterday I was talking to Joyce, and I have to share. She says, oh, you know, he gets mad at me if I get out of the car without him letting me open, or letting you open the door for her. And those little things that you do and the things I'm sure that you guys give each other, I think that's so hugely important well, to remember. I Joyce say you can't lose your level. You can't you lose your level of courtesy, civility, and love and positive in the crisis because... Yeah. That's when, it, that's when it all goes to hell. Yeah. When, it, when you're nicer to the customer service person that's a stranger that called you than you are to your spouse. There's you know, something I'm, wrong. <laughs> I'm adamant on manners and civility and courtesy because I think it sustains us and I think it sets an excellent example for Daniel. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that piece of it is important. Humor, uh, Ron Kaufman said something from Sunrise Institute that is just so wonderful. Don't let anyone tell you you shouldn't be hopeful for your child. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be positive. I am a, a positive person. Some people have said shallow, but <laughs> Please. I am ready for a party. I don't yeah. want to go to a support group and cry. I want to get my yeah. nails done. I want to be positive, and yeah. so I keep our home positive. I'm ready. I'm, I want him to have a great time. Daniel's I want like that too. the She's baby pool filled with shaving now. cream and glitter, and let's play in it. You know, you know let's what that's called <laughs> that's called love. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, and, and honestly, I think we talk about diet as the foundation. I really think it's love it is the as the foundation. And I think that's what keeps all of us going and answering the phone at 3 o'clock in the morning and you bringing the book on the date, <laughs> you know, and doing all of that. And I just want to thank you guys for being here. And I, I want the people to find you. So can you give your website to them? Uh, where, which one, whichever one you well, want. Well, the American <laughs> Medical Autism Board, which is there for the community and for doctors uh, mm -hmm. to understand what we're doing in terms of our certification. You can Google AMAB, A-M-A-B, and find it. It's easy. But it's ASD for Autism Spectrum Disorder, ASD Boards, plural, dot org. We're a dot org because we're a nonprofit. Well, and again, thank you guys so And thanks much. to Google, if you do put in dot com, it comes up. Oh, it does? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. We have both because that's what a lot of people put in. So. Well, that's just because we're so And then history. his website for his practice is www.drdemio.com, and it's D-R-D-E-M-I-O. Perfect. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. Thank I you. so enjoyed it. Thanks for having us. And, it's really a pleasure. And I could talk to you all day, and I'll be talking to you later today. Too. All right. <laughs> and to all of you guys, thank you guys for watching. If you want more info on the show, you want to be a guest on the show, you can email us at ksg at autismapproved.com. You can also follow us on Twitter, 
and that's K. Selby Gonzalez, or on Facebook at Kristen Selby Gonzalez. I'd like to thank Enzymedica for sponsoring this show, and I'd like to thank all of you guys for allowing us to bring hope into your homes this week. Thanks again. Bye. Thank you for joining us for Autism Approved with Kristen Selby Gonzalez. Please join us next week for another episode brought to you by Enza Medica.